As I mentioned last time, I would like to start share every day with the uh, idea, during Sphere Salimer at least, that Memches Dvarim Shatayra nicknames Baham the 48 ways to wisdom as they are generally called by Aisha Torah. And we're going to base it upon the words of Ramatzio Salomon, Shmir Fushlem of Ramatzio, in his Sefer Madnas Chaim. So if you look through the Mem Ches Dvarim, there are some basic obvious ones that we would all would ab- immediately include. You have Talmud, Shmiya Saozen, you got to learn, you got to listen, you got to know what you're saying, you got to be a slave, understand. Be'ema, Be'yira, Be'anova, Be'simcha. These are all basic, easy to understand, easy to comprehend why they are part of the list of Memeches, Devarim, Shatayra, Niknes, Mem. If I had to make a list, guess what? I would also include those. They're pretty basic, and we're going to have to go through each one with the Kiddushes. Because they're so obvious. If you want to, if you want to know Torah, you got to learn Torah. You got to listen to what you're saying. Otherwise, you're not going to know anything. Those are the obvious, easy ones. But if you go through the entire list of all 48 from beginning to end, there's one obvious one that if you or I, or basically anyone in the world, is writing down a list of Nem Ches Dvarim, 48 ways to wisdom, the number one, probably number one, that you would list would be something called tefillah. Tefillah. Tefillah would be a basic, basic assumption as to one of the 48 ways to wisdom. Mem ches kinyanim. And if you look through the entire list of all 48, tefillah is completely omitted. It's not there at all. And it's an omission that begs Darshani. Please explain to me why is it that tefillah is left out of this list? Again, if I were writing the list out, probably number one, maybe number two. The Gemara and Nida, to make the question that much stronger, to make the question that much more pointed, the Gemara and Nida tells us, Shalu Anche Alexandria, Alexandria, I'm sorry, Yeshua Yeshua ben Chananya. The Anche Alexandria people of Egypt, they asked Rabbi Yeshua ben Chananya, oh, how can a person become wise? What should he do to become wise? So Omar Lahem, Rabbi Shuv and Hanani answered them, Yarbe be Yeshiva be Maya Guess what? Guess what? If you're in a lockdown and there's no business going on, so you got nothing else to do but learn. So Yarba be Yeshiva. So instead of having Yeshiva for 10 hours a day, you can have Yeshiva for 12 hours a day. Yarba be Yeshiva, you learn more, you'll become wiser. Amru, so Anshu Alexandri responded to Rishuv and Hanani, Harba also came to the Many people tried that and it didn't work for them. Rather, responds to Shubin Khanani, it's not enough just to be Arab, it's not enough just to learn. But you have to also ask for Rachamim from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the one who is the master of all Rachamim. He is the master of Chachma, and if you ask him, and beseech Chachma from Hashem, then he is the one that is able to bestow that Chachma upon you. Ki Hashem yitein Chachma mipiv dasut funa. That Hashem is the one who's yitein Chachma. Says the Gemara, my Kemash Mulan. What's the Chiddush? What's the Chiddush? That a person has to be Yarbi Bishi of... Um, in other words, if at the end of the day, Rashi explains, that the Chachma is coming from Hashem, so why is it necessary to invest the time in learning? Just ask for Hashem to grant you Chachma. Make our lives so much easier. Answers the Gemara, the Ha, Belay Ha, Loi, Saiga. Because one without the other won't work. You can't accomplish Chachma unless you have this partnership, this duality of Tfila and Taira. Together, a person can accomplish Chachm. But one without the other is, is irrelevant, won't work. Says Ramatis Yo, Obviously, if a person can't accomplish anything without Tfila, obviously, then a necessary way to accomplish Torah is through Tfila. 
And lacking tefillah is the ultimate, the strongest reason that his Torah, his learning didn't work. So again, if you were writing a list of mem ches devarim shatayrinich the number one on that list, ha below ha sagya, you can do every one of these mem ches, but if you leave out tefillah, you ain't gonna get anywhere. It's all going to be for naught. So why is it that the Tana left out, strikingly left out tefillah from the list of mem ches devarim? Why is it left out? I want to share with you the answer that Ramatisho Solomon says, Mashkech of Lakewood, Mamasha, he hit the nail on the head. A beautiful, beautiful text. A beautiful text. He points us to the Mishnah of his parak out of Mishnah Bates. The Mishnah tells us, There are three pillars of the world is Torah. There's Avoida and there's Gemilus Chasad. And we know that a table, the minimum amount of legs that a table needs in order to stand is three. Without three, ta- three legs, the table's balancing. It might last a little bit, but it ain't going to last very long. And Rabbi Yoyna tells us, explaining that Mishnah, that, based on the Gemara, that Fila is that Omu that's Oymed Bimkoyim Toiro, that's Oymed Bimkoyim Avoida, Slicha. When the base of English was around, you had Torah, Avoid, and Milz Chasad. There were three, those were the three pillars. But Bechata'enu, that the base of English is destroyed, that Tfila is now that Amud, that is that pillar that the world rests upon in place of the Avoid. There are three independent, independent legs for the world to rest upon. Explains Ramatis Yo, Solomon, Mamash, a Meiritic of a beautiful, beautiful Daher. He says, tefillah is not a means to an end. Tefillah is not just a hechitim, it's not a way to accomplish, a way to achieve, a way to get somewhere. In our natural understanding of davening, we look at the world and what's around us. We look at our predicament that we're in. We say, a person chas v'chalila is sick, he needs a refuah, so let's daven refuahinu Hashem and Erofen. A person has v'chalila lost his job. He needs money. He needs parnasa. So he turns to Hashem and says, "Please give me parnasa." Says Ramatis Yo, "You missed the boat completely. Tefila is not a means to an end. It's not the way to accomplish that which you're lacking. But tefila is an end in and of itself. It's an amud that the world rests upon, independent of everything else." HaKadosh Baruch Hu is mitzap le-tfilos and shatinek is mitzvah. HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants, he desires, he wants to hear a person daven. He wants the person to connect to him through tfilo. That is a tachlis bifne atzmo. It's its own independent goal, tfilo. And in order for the person to want to daven, and not only want to daven, but to want to daven with kavano, and have hergish, have emotion in the daven, to connect to Hashem in a much deeper sense, HaKadosh Baruch Hu places the person in a predicament that's going to force him to want to daven. In other words, when a person realizes, he understands, he recognizes that the only Yeshua is going to come from Hashem, that the only way out of his current matzav is through bitochen in Hashem, so his natural reaction is to daven. And Hashem therefore places the person in the predicament that causes him to die because Hashem wants to feel him. Says Ramatis Yo, if that's the case, we can understand that Tfila is not a means of accomplishing better Torah, more Torah. The Pshat is that Hashem places us in a predicament of lacking Chachma in order that we'll turn to Hashem and say, please give me tzachma. Not because the tefillah is a hechitim, so a means, a way to get to the chachma. It's because Hashem wants to hear the tefillah. He wants us to connect to Him. And therefore, He wants that davening, so He makes us, in, He places us in the situation where we need to die. So it's not a means that to the end. It's not a way, it's not a hechitim, it's not a kinyin of Torah. It's an amud bifnei atzim. 
in the situation, the predicament that we're currently in, that's a tremendously inspiring and beautiful lesson. We look at the world around us, we say, unfortunately, the machala that we see around us is very, very strong. And we see it's unfortunately, although it might be letting up a little bit, it might be getting a little bit better, but at the end of the day, it's scary reality. We're all locked down, we're at our homes. The yeshiva is not in session in the, in the physical entity of the yeshiva. And we can look at that and say, Hashem, please help us get us out of the situation. Or we can look at that situation and say, HaKadosh Baruch, we know you want us to dive in, so we're going to reach out to you with our tefillah. We can recognize, realize, and understand that the reality that we're in is only there as a way to force us to cause us to understand that we really need to dive in. And Hashem wants our tefillahs, and He shut down the Bate Medrash. Why? Because He wants us to dive in for a base Medrash. Because He wants the tefillahs so much. He wants us to appreciate the base Medrash. He wants to appreciate the tefillahs. So Mamela, we don't have the normal minyanim. Because as soon as we lose it, we appreciate it that much more. We want it that much greater. Therefore, we dive in for it. Not as a way to get it back but as a way to connect to Hashem directly through the tefillah. The chayr, that's a pelotic, a beautiful art, a har and a flaw, as Ramatis himself calls it, and a lesson that's very negaya for our time that we're in right now. Ad Khan.